Deciding to move your family halfway around the world isn't just about where you want to live, it's also about how you want to live. And facing that choice can be a huge strain, especially if your dreams are very different. Stephen Bishop is desperate for a new life in Australia. That made her realise just how unhappy I am. But his wife Elisa can't bear the idea of abandoning her home and business. I would everything I've worked for since so I was 14 years old. And Australia will throw up some big disappointments. I'm fully gutted, hugely disappointed. Do you not get this? It's not a blow to my dream, certainly. Australia is the most popular country for Brits moving abroad. They may be tempted by its golden beaches, sunny climate and famous relaxed lifestyle. But leaving behind everything and everyone you know can turn a simple dream into the hardest challenge of your life. Over the next seven days, the bishops will get to experience the reality of living in Australia. At the end of it, they'll face a life-changing decision, whether to stay in the UK or to make the move for good. After a truly mammoth journey involving four flights, the bishops are finally in Australia. It's three days travelling to get here. But it's going to be worth it, right? Yep. <laughs> I hope this is the make or break, biggest decision of our lives. Life changing stuff. It'd be a terrible shame to get it all wrong. In the UK, the bishops live on the windswept Shetland Isles, far off the coast of Scotland. The family are Elisa, aged 32, hubby Stephen, who's 28, and three-year-old daughter Maddie. Stephen works as a maintenance engineer at an oil terminal, and Elisa owns a livery business. After a long honeymoon to Australia in 2005, Stephen really fell for the possibility of a new life down under. When I got back, I just had the feeling it might have been a mistake to come back, and uh, can't seem to shake that feeling. He was like, Elisa, I can't get Australia out of my head. I, I just, I really want to go. I want to make a go of it. Due to a decline in the Shetland fishing industry, Stephen works at an oil terminal. He hopes Australia could be the chance to get back to the job he loves. I'm a qualified marine engineer, and I'd like to try and get my skills back. I feel I've lost a lot of my skills working at the oil terminal. Also, Stephen longs for a more outdoor lifestyle with his family, something he can't really enjoy in the Shetlands. The weather here in Shetland it really gets me down and makes me very miserable. It can often be a very long winter, dark and uh, windy, very wet and uh, pretty cold most of the time. It's like that for five months, six months of the year. His Australian-born wife Elisa moved to Shetland from Melbourne when she was eight. Unfortunately for Stephen, she feels very differently about the Shetlands. I love my life here. I have my dream. I have everything around me that I could ever have dreamt of. Shetland is a place that you'll never find anywhere else. It's amazing. It's you have one end of Shetland that's flat and green, and then the other end is massive cliffs and hills, and you can see for miles. Shetland is, is freedom. One, two, three, go! Elisa has built up her livery business from scratch, and the idea of giving it up seems unthinkable. What's that? It's taken me so long to build up this business, and so long to have my dream. I've had the dream of this since I was little. Um, and to sell this up would completely break my heart. There's no two ways about that at all. I just, 
I love this place to pieces and I can't imagine being without it. And there's another problem which is even harder to contemplate, leaving her mum behind. We talk nearly every day on the phone. I love her to pieces. She's all I have. I don't have a granny and granddad. You know, we don't have a big family network on my side. I only have my mum and my stepdad. So it really almost scares me to think that I wouldn't have her there. However, Stephen's desire for a new life down under has them divided. It's on our minds the whole time. We argue about it. It's made her realise, I think, that just how unhappy I am and that there is potential for us both to have what we want out in Australia. He really wants to go out there. He wants to further his career. He wants to have more family time, do more outdoor things, let Maddie experience the world more, which is all amazing things. But is he still in holiday mode from our honeymoon? Or is he really thinking that would be our lives? They've decided to give Australia a try. They have a week to decide where their future lies. It's a decision that could leave one of them heartbroken. I mean, you have to come together to make each other happy, don't you? One of us is going to have to give up our dream. It's a big, big problem. It's a huge dilemma. Stephen and Elisa both want the best possible future for their family. They simply can't agree where it should be. With so much riding on their choice, it's a big week ahead. Home for the week is the Queensland countryside. It should offer plenty of open spaces, with Brisbane and beaches nearby for the family to enjoy Australian living. But will the reality measure up? It's a 50-mile drive to the heart of the Tambourine Mountain area to their base for the week. Like their Shetland home, it's quiet and rural, but with one big difference. Oh, we got the trees. Wowee. It's got more trees than back home, doesn't it, Mary? Uh -huh. There's no trees back home. <laughs> if they're impressed by the trees, hopefully they'll also be happy with the property. It's a two-bedroom country-style cottage. Oh, wood burner. That's nice. I like that. Barbecue area. You like having barbecue, don't you? <laughs> this is so not like our house back home, is it? Mm -hmm. It's all different. Mm -hmm. Do you like it, though? Look at that bit. What's he saying? Let's we'll see how close we can get. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Where's he going? Where's he going? The travelling and excitement have caught up with Maddie, so while she takes a nap, Stephen and Elisa get to reflect on the challenging days ahead. I'm hoping this week can answer a lot of questions that I've got, whether this is the right move. You might not even like it by the end of the week. I had this vision in my head for that long, it might not be what I've been planning it to be. I hope that's not true. It's going to be seven tough days, and the enormity of what they are taking on is dawning on Elisa. I think the decision has to be made with a 100%. So this week really is a, is a massive, massive thing, and we really have to make a lot of tough decisions. Some I don't think we're even ready for. Mm. <laughs> now we're here, mm. it's really daunting. For most families moving down under, finding the right house in the right area is no easy matter. But for the bishops, finding a property that meets their unique requirements could be quite a challenge. Back in the UK, the bishops live in a two-bedroom cottage in Whiteness on the Shetlands. It also has over 50 acres of land that Elisa uses for her horse riding business. When it comes to their ideal house in Australia, there is a slight difference in what each of them wants. Somewhere I can see the sea. That's a big thing for me. Seeing the sea doesn't bother me. I almost have an image of not seeing it. For me, the land isn't such a big issue. 
My ideal would be about 50 acres of land. Because really what we have here is absolutely perfect for horses. You have to find me that out there. It's at the top of the list. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe second through the top. I can see this is not going to be easy, especially as it's Stephen who is driving this move. They bought their house for £255,000. If they can get a good price for it and Elisa's livery business, they could have a budget of around £400,000. However, house prices in Australia have risen while those in the UK have dropped. So can they afford an ideal home? Today, we're giving them a taste of Queensland's rural property market. We'll show them three options that should give them an idea of what they want and what they can afford. After they've seen each house, we'll reveal to the bishops how much they cost. Their search starts in the Guanaba area. The open countryside and forests are popular with horse riders and being only 15 minutes drive from the Gold Coast Marina will also be great for Stephen's work. The first property is a large three-bedroom house with three acres of garden and outbuildings which should suit everyone. Oh, wow. This is nice. Oh, look at the big stove. And look at where the wine goes. <laughs> this is my kind of place. That is a great start. This will just be just living area here, eh? Oh, look. This could be Maddie's bedroom. Decent sized room, though. It is, yeah. This is nice. It feels really cool in here, which is good. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole house feels like that. Yeah. En suite. Not got an en suite back home, eh? No. I wanted one. I like it. Elisa's positivity is great news for Stephen's dream. Will she be so upbeat about the outside, though? I could imagine sitting out here, eh? A glass of wine. It's a big garden. It is a big garden. Very private here. I think the house is pretty much perfect it's for us living. It's a big outdoor living area. Yeah. It's nice, it's good. But yeah. there's not enough usable land for, for the horses, because I have 52 acres of usable land back home. Maybe the price will make up for the lack of land. The house certainly impressed both Elisa and Stephen. However, the shortage of grazing has dampened Elisa's enthusiasm. Time to find out the price. Go on then. Oh. Holy moly, I thought that was Australian dollars. That's totally out of our price range. It's a bit, yeah. And it's not got the land that we need. No. It's a shame. That is a shock, because then we're quite far out. I didn't expect it to be as much as that. We have to set our sights a bit lower, perhaps. There's no land for the horses. You can't get any lower than is in the land. I ain't going to settle for keeping a goat. This house is more than £30,000 over their budget. If everything hinges on Elisa's passion for horses, could they struggle to find a house with enough land? The second house is in the Pigabean area, only a short drive to some of the region's best beaches. Set in open countryside, it should have something for both Stephen and Elisa. This four-bedroom house has lots of land, but something else has caught Elisa's eye. We're going to have a look at the stables. Priorities first. It's now a workshop, but it could be converted back, no problem. It's more, I don't know, it's just... The sun's in your face. Well, welcome to Australia. You're not used to it, eh? <laughs> right, we go up and have a look at the house then. Ah, yes, the house. Hopefully this will be a useful addition to the stables. Another wood-burning stove. I'm liking... I'm liking this house better. I've got a better feel about it. I like the kitchen. The living area is a hit. Can the bedroom keep up with their expectations? Bedroom. Nice size. Yeah. This is like our one back home, eh? Yeah, this is a better size. Ensuite. Yeah. This is nice. It's all going down very well so far. Outside, there's another feature that could seal the deal. Look at that. Put your feet in. Oh, it's cold. 
cold. Is it cold? Yeah. You can put your feet back in. Would you like to have your own swimming pool in the garden? Yeah. Because you love swimming. You come out here every day and swim. I like it. Way better than the other one. I like the other house better, I think. But I like this location a bit more. And to top it all off, there's five acres of land. But will it be enough for her needs? You keep your ponies up here. We would easy keep two horses on this. And that would do. You could flatten this area out and put in your own sand arena here. This could be the riding area. Elisa's certainly racing ahead with what she could do here, but she doesn't know the price. Will this much land and a pool put it beyond their budget, or is Stephen's dream within their reach? What does this house cost? Are you going to do the honours? <sighs> oh, OK. Not too bad. I thought, yeah, it's cheaper than the other one. That's just slightly over their budget of £400,000. Do you think it's doable? Well, it could be. I'm just not so sure on the actual house itself, unfortunately. We just have such different tastes. What's Stephen playing at? If he wants to convince Elisa that their future lies in Australia, can he really afford to be so picky about a house that she would be happy with? Everything rests on property three. It's in an area of Wonga Wallen between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. It's an up and coming part of Queensland, meaning the bishops should be able to get a little bit more for their money here. It's a new Queenslander style house with four bedrooms and there's a welcome site waiting for the family. Hello. There you go. It's so good to see a horse again. You miss them. That means there should be enough land for Elisa to keep horses. Can the house convince as well? Mm. This is nice. It's really quite new, isn't it? Nice and light and airy in here too. Elisa seems to feel at home, and downstairs there's a room she likes even more. Look. <gasps> this is nice. This. It's quite suited for a granny, eh? Although Stephen has his own ideas. Maybe even Dad's TV room. What do you think? With time to reflect, Elisa and Stephen are both in agreement. It is stunning. Out of the three, this house I think is my favourite. It's only three acres, but fit a couple of horses on that. It's a lovely spot for sure. It's beautiful. It's the first house that we've actually agreed on, isn't it? Yeah. But what about the price? Can they afford it? Or will this house have to stay a dream home? <laughs> it's the cheapest. 350,000. That's good. 575. That's surprising. I thought it'd be a lot more. I did. I'm happy with that. Nice area. Nice house. Mm-hmm. Terrific views. Amazing views. Horses right out there. What do you think, Maddie? Do you like it? Do you yeah. like it? No. Oh dear. At least Mum and Dad are agreed on the property, but there's still some uncertainty. I would say it's achievable at this price. It would depend. Depend on how much our house is valued at back home. Yeah. But I mean, I'm hoping not to get far off of that back home, eh? Yeah. So affording a house they'd be happy with rests on what they can get for their UK home. It's been an eye-opening day. The first house didn't have the land that Elisa wants and the price was way out of range. The second seemed to have it all with its pool and grounds but failed to excite Stephen. The final house hit the spot with both of them, with enough space for all their needs and just within their budget. So how will they vote? OK, well, today's been an eventful day. Based on the properties we've seen, we're going to vote... UK. Australia. That is a surprise. Elisa seems so positive about the houses she saw. Why did she vote for the UK? 
I do love that last property, don't get me wrong. Like if I if we were definitely moving to Australia, I'd go for that one. But we've got so much more back home for our money. So much more land, the arena, the stables, the sheds. When I'm weighing up to two, it's definitely the UK for me, home. That's a huge setback for Stephen. If Elisa can't think of giving up her UK home even for an ideal property, is there any way Stephen can convince her to move to Australia? It's a mixed start for the bishops. Property in Oz did interest Elisa, but also reminded her what she'd be giving up at home. For Stephen, though, the real gain down under could be sharing a better family lifestyle. Today, they're on a trip to Mount Tambourine National Park. Set in 100 square kilometres of stunning countryside, it should give them a rare chance to spend a day together and to get some thinking time. See down there? Look. Really high. Okay, it's nice to get out into the rainforest with Maddie and have a look around. I can't even remember when the last time was we spent a day out as a family together. It's really nice. Something that doesn't happen very often back home. Go! That way? Yeah. Okay, let's go. This rare trip out as a family has certainly got someone excited. She's loving it. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> Wait for us, Maddie! You it there, you. <laughs> Don't chase her, she'll be off. And Stephen is remembering why he wants to move down under. I just love everything about Australia. Feel really at home here. Love the sunshine. Can't even describe how it makes me feel being up here. I don't know. It almost makes me feel more alive. I'm, uh, I'm absolutely in love with the place. Even Elisa can see the appeal too. It is really lovely. The weather's on our side and. You know, you don't get anything like this back home. After a gentle stroll, it's time for something more thrilling. Oh, look, the trees are going to be over the top of us here. Look up. Oh, come on. Are you frightened? Is it, is it kind of scary? You want to hold Dad's hand? Whoa. Look how high up we are. <gasps> Holy moly. Holy moly. <laughs> That's like a swimming pool, isn't it? Is it like a swimming pool? Mm -hmm. Today is showing Stephen exactly the future he wants. Coming here, I think it'll make us all just that bit happier as a family. And I think it would make me a bit more easier to get on with if I was a bit more happier in my life. So yeah, I think it could be life changing and uh, I try and prove that to Elisa. But proving it to Elisa could be easier said than done. This is amazing, don't get me wrong, but in reality, if you were living here, working, and 48 hour week, would you be going somewhere every single weekend? You know, how much of this would we actually do? I don't know if it's enough to, to sway me to, to move here, you know, to give everything up. Has the day together convinced Elisa of the benefits of the Aussie lifestyle? Time to vote. Based on the activities we've done here in Australia as a family, we're going to vote for... Australia. Australia. That's good. That's purely because we get more family time out here usable family time with the weather. Without, yeah, being outside <coughs> and there's more activities to do for the three of us that are like neutral. That's another surprise vote from Elisa, but it is good news for Stephen. Is he really one step closer to the life he wants? The Aussie lifestyle showed Stephen and Elisa a real upside to life down under. But affording it and having time to enjoy it would mean finding good work prospects in Brisbane. Otherwise, the bishops could find themselves in the same situation they are at home. In the Shetlands, Stephen works in maintenance at an oil terminal. Having trained as a marine engineer, he'd like to get back to the kind of work he loves. It's not the job I like to do. I like to try and 
get my skills back. I feel I've lost a lot of my skills. I'd like to get back more into the engineering side of things rather than the, the maintenance. We've arranged for him to visit a local shipyard. He's hoping Australia will provide more chances of working in the boating industry and give him the family life he's missing out on. I, mean, I work nearly seven days a week back home as much as I can just to try and make ends meet. The idea of moving here is to spend more family time, spend more time with my daughter Maddie. And uh, yeah, I don't want to be working 12 hour days every day of the week. Meanwhile, Elisa is visiting a riding centre. As horses are her passion and her business, it's vital she can do something similar in Australia. Hi! Hi! I'm Elisa. I'm Debbie, how How's are you? How's it going? Oh, I'm so glad to be here. I've been needing a horsey fix since I arrived. <laughs> so, you live here then? Yeah, yeah. Um, my house is just up the hill, which is fantastic. Get up, out of bed, walk down yeah. the stables. See, this is just yeah. so like the setup I have back home, but it's just like the Australian version. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, have we'll a come look? through yeah. and I'll show you all the okay. horses. Super. While Elisa gets her fix of horses, Stephen is getting his fix of boats and engines with the site manager. This vessel here is from one of the islands up in the Whitsundays. Um, she's due for a major uh, service. Yeah, let's go up and have a look. As you can see, it's uh, seen better days. Yeah. But with a lot of tender love and care, she'll come back good as new. So as you can see, we've got one engine out already. Um, and the other ones are um, pretty much due to come out as well. And then either replace or rebuild and fit it all back in. Yeah. All right, so kind of interesting stuff. Uh, it's a big project you can really get your teeth into and yeah. get excited about. So. Exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. That does sound promising. Elisa hasn't been able to resist getting into the saddle. Enjoy that? Yeah, really. <laughs> She's just so comfortable to yeah. ride. It's fun. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> it's just lovely being able to ride out in this lovely weather. We just don't get it back home, and it's given me a lot to think about in a, in a good way. So oh, thank you very, very, very much, and we'll stay in contact. Yes, definitely. Keep in touch. Yeah. Yep, um, and it's my pleasure. It was really okay. nice to meet you, and good luck. I good know, decisions. thank you. <laughs> At the boatyard, Stephen is steaming straight to the most crucial questions. What kind of wages can you expect here? Uh, the wages for your type of qualifications be between fifteen and sixty thousand yeah. Australian. At best, that's around thirty-eight thousand pounds, less than he earns in the UK. Although there is one big difference. And that's based on how many hours a week? Uh, Thirty-eight hour work week, which yeah. is um, Monday to Thursday. It'll be a seven a.m. start, four o'clock finish. Yeah. And on a Friday, it's a seven o'clock start and a two o'clock finish. It's nice to have that two and a half day weekend. Yeah, yeah, sounds really, really good. Well, that's great news for Stephen. This move is all about being able to spend more time with his family. Being able to ride again has really got Elisa thinking. Just being out here with the nice weather and knowing that you can really plan ahead here in the horsey world and for breaking and training and just going out for a hack. The business side of things um, is really promising. That sounds suspiciously like she's considering moving to Australia. You know, it could be possible. You know, it could be possible. I, I could be happy here. It's just a little bit of a change for me. A little bit of a turnaround, I think. It looks like Stephen's dream of emigrating has suddenly moved one step closer to becoming a reality, especially as the idea of lower wages doesn't seem a problem. It's a completely different job to what I'm doing at the moment back home. The job I'm doing at the moment isn't something I enjoy, so I'd rather take a pay cut and do something I do enjoy, especially out here in the beautiful weather. But could he be putting his dream ahead of the financial reality? Time to vote on work. Based on the job opportunities out here in Australia and what I've seen today, I vote for Australia. Stephen is still pressing on for Australia. Can he really afford the move?
Despite his mixed news, Stephen still believes the benefits of moving would outweigh the risks. And Elisa seems to be warming to a life in Australia. But with the decision in the balance, seeing what their UK home is worth could be a major factor. Their house and land in the Shetlands cost them £255,000 four years ago, and they think it's now worth around £300,000, including Elisa's business. We sent two local estate agents round to value the property in the current climate. Silly dear. Uh, this, this has been fairly fully renovated, insulated, new windows, new floors, new central heating. Uh, fine, freshly decorated room. The only disadvantage here is the comb ceilings, which are, reduces height, height at the, the doors. And also with the old property, the stairs are quite steep. But that said, decent accommodation upstairs. This is a former croft house. If the house and the various other assets are sold as an entity, we would estimate them realising in the reaches of 270 to 290,000 pounds. Having inspected the house, the land and the outbuildings, I think we are dealing with a package value of 275,000. Those are both lower than the 300,000 they were hoping for. I'm completely gutted, hugely disappointed. It's just the amount of money and everything we ploughed into that place just to be told it's not worth any more than what we really paid for it. In some ways it makes me even more thingy not to go back to that house. Well, I knew that would put fuel into your fire. Yeah. There's no way I'll be able to afford anything we land. And there's no way I'm coming without having horses and land. Of looks could kill. Well, from my perspective, why would I, I know. sell what we have to move to a house with nothing around me and I can't even keep a donkey in the garden? And why would I stay doing a job I hate to pay for a place that isn't worth anything? I know, that's Stephen. So... See ya. There we are again. It's not all about money though, Stephen, is it? When you're paying whatever you're at. It is when I have to work all the time to keep well, so that do, place. So. so do I. I work seven days a week, Stephen. Yeah, but I'm working for a place I don't really want anymore. I know you're not happy in your work and I know you don't like Shetland, Stephen. But looking at it from Maddie's side of things, she has a really good future back there. So I know you're gutted right now but you need to maybe pull yourself back a bit and weigh up the pros and cons, basically. Hmm, it's just throwing a huge spanner in the works, that one. For you? Yeah. Not so much for me. Finding out the value of their home seems to have really highlighted how Stephen and Elisa feel. However, Stephen isn't giving up so easily. We've prepared a comparison of their UK and Australian finances for them to examine. Will this be what puts an end to any hope of a move? Properties. So... This is the one that we like the best and it worked out the cheapest. Monthly repayments, that's like double what we're paying now, just under. Yeah. That's a lot more. That is a lot, yeah. And that's the cheapest. Cost of living. Is your wage is going to be less? A lot less. Look at that, after tax. Looks like you'd have to be working the same hours over here. So you are back home. Horses, double. Clothes, more expensive. Nights out, more expensive. Right, so UK, we've got just over well, 2,200. 
Outgoings. Outgoings. Australia will be just over 3,000. So it's a lot more when our mortgage is going to be 50 odd thousand more and we're going to be right 20, well, just under 20,000 pound less in wages. So I'm going to have to get like a really good job ASAP and Maddie will have to go into childcare. Yeah. Or you're going to be working every hour God sends you. It's another blow. It's another blow to my dream, certainly. The difference in their living costs each month is a lot more than Stephen or Elisa expected. But if they both work full time, the move might still be possible. Taking everything into account, how will they vote? Based on the finances that we've just found out, we're going to vote the UK. Hmm. Based on what we've seen today, it just wouldn't be finan financially viable to do it. It's gotten. Must be more so gotten for you. Absolutely. Seeing the price of his dream life in Australia was tough for Stephen to take. But there's one more cost they need to consider. The impact of leaving loved ones behind. While Maddie gets some sleep, Stephen and Elisa sit down to watch messages from family and friends. Can they really face the pain of leaving them behind? Ready? Hello folks, I hope you're oh, having a lovely um, time at the moment. Elisa's a very loyal. She's good fun. She's always there for you. And there's never a dull moment when she's around. She makes everything fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything. Stephen's lovely. He does a lot for Lisa and he does a lot for her friends. Always makes sure things are fixed. He's a very kind person, Stephen. And we'll miss him too. Stephen is a father. He's, he loves Maddy. You can see it. He, uh, he spends a lot of time and Maddy loves him. I think um, Stephen wants to go to Australia so he can better himself in his career and get a job that he really wants, that he's really passionate about. Stephen's so meticulous that he just wants a job that he can be a perfection at that. I think it'll give Stephen a new opportunity. Because he's, he's, yeah. not, he's not happy here with his job. I think they'll regret it if they don't go and try it. We only yeah. have Elisa as a daughter and Maddie's the only grandchild, so... I don't think you could measure how much I'm going to miss Elisa and Maddie and Stephen if they go. You know, it's an awful long way to go if anything ever happened to them and... Would we? Like, would we ever be able to afford to go out there if anything happened to Stephen? You know that we'll be there whenever possible to see you, but you also know we'll miss you. Good luck to you both, and that's what your plans are, and you know we'll be behind you 100%. Well... What's that made you feel? That... Shetland's still for me. Yeah. I'm 32, and the people I have around me now, I want them there every day. I want to see their faces every day. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy back home. And I know you're not, and I don't know how that's going to change. I don't know. This is just... It's so hard. We both want completely different things. Mm -hmm. I just don't even want to consider going home yet. I can't even bring myself to think about it. I mean, where does Maddy fit into your dream out here? I think Maddy will have far more opportunity out here. But I struggle with her not sleeping and working with the help that I have at the moment, Stephen. You'll be out at work and I'll be there by myself. Do you not get this? I want to have that out here. And not only will I lose that, I'll lose everything that I've worked for. I can see that you hate your job, 
And I can see that you hate Shetland, but I can't help that. As they reach the end of their week, it's brought home just what Shetland means to Elisa. But Stephen's unhappiness with work and life in the UK is just as clear. It's an almost impossible dilemma for both of them to face. As they reach their final vote, they both have a lot to think about. It's only been seven days, but Elisa and Stephen have come a long way. It's sort of my eyes a lot, this experience to um, what it might actually be like to, to actually live here. Certainly the, the cost of living was a bit of an eye-opener. I do think about the decision day in, day out, really. It's just my whole life. I've wanted what I have, and I have it, and I've only had it for two years. But some days I, I wake up and I think, just give it a go, you know, make Stephen happy. It's time to make the final crucial vote. Does their future lie in Australia, or is giving up Shetland unthinkable? Well, this week's been an amazing opportunity. It's given us a real insight on what would happen if we moved out here, the pros and the cons. So, taking all that into account, now we're going to vote. UK? Undecided. I'm a bit surprised with that. Part of the idea of moving to Australia for me was to move out here and have some financial st stability and not to be having to work every hour to sustain our life out here. But everything else considered, I'm still swayed towards Australia. It's a massive disappointment for Stephen. His years of dreaming about Australia have been rocked by the harsh realities of money and work. I know the safe and happy future that me and Maddie would have back home. I just don't know where Stephen fits into it all because he's just not happy. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to sit down together and just really have a good think and have a good chat on where we go from here. It's been a tough week for the bishops. They've been forced to confront the reality of wanting different lives. Hopefully, understanding the depth of their feelings will be the first step to finding the better future they all want. We wish them the very best of luck. And BBC One's back in Oz later. Bargain hunters swapping their British pounds for Australian dollars here at 12.15. Next this morning, a house in Canterbury with scarily springy floors goes under the hammer.